So I'm just going to do a, what I call a splash print, where it has no form, no, no screw, um, stencil, just a bit of randomly placed colour that I will layer over and over again. until I have a huge mishmash of imagery. And I keep using the same screen so that I get a shadow of my previous pool. way of printing and quite unorthodox. There's no form so I tend to probably do things that aren't very usual. And also I tend to use the same screen constantly so the colours start to the colours start to blend and mix up, which is the whole purpose. good fun working with freeform because you're not restricted by a preconceived image you have in your mind. And I do find things like this where I keep adding little bits and pieces in adds to the final image. I'll just swap the colours over. So a very quick way of printing. You don't have a lot of the restrictions that you have. It's also a very messy way of printing. kind of warts and all, you get all the marks from where you've stopped your squeegee, all the marks of your previous run, but it, it adds, it, it personalises the print, it makes it part of, part of it, 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 it it, it makes it clearly something that's been made by hand and not a machine. Which is probably why I do, why I print. So there we have three colours. So now I'm just going to throw one little highlight colour in there. Which will bring a little bit of depth to it. 
it's just an ever so faint yellow. Well, it's not really that faint. be a little bit careful when you're making product for decor because it, any colour that becomes the main colour suddenly it becomes a decor item and people will only buy that item if it matches their decor. You sort of sometimes you have to let go of your artistic allegiances or beliefs and just realize that that's what it's all about for a lot of people and that mess is my finished print I'm now going to use my fabric that I've printed and I'm going to back it with styrene so that it's um, suitable to put on a lampshade on some rings and make it into a lampshade. I use a self-adhesive styrene, which I can't get off at all. Let's try from this end. There we go. This gives your lampshade some form. It also makes it makes it look good I guess now, let's do this just make sure we get no creases in the fabric Sure, there are easier ways to do this, but this works for me. And there we go. Just smooth it out. The glue adheres for the whole piece. And now I'm going to trim it. I should measure this, but I've done it so many times. tend to do it by eye. This extra portion on the side is this piece that's going to wrap around the metal rings of the lampshade. Right. And all that's done. into making things like lampshades, they're so actually quite precise. You get your measurements wrong and you have to throw the whole thing out. And there we have fabric. And once again, you can see with my print, you get all the little 
it's warts and all, you get everything, it's great. Okay. Now we're going to roll the fabric onto frames and we adhere it to the, I adhere it anyway, to the frame with a very strong double-sided tape, very strong glue, and then I also use a glue on the fabric, so there's almost no chance of it coming off. But once again, if only I can find the ends, I can do this. There we go. This can be quite a time consuming and before I do that too, I need to just glue one small bit. And I'm, I'm just gluing the end here because I'm going to fold over a piece of fabric so that when you see the lampshade from the outside, it will be neat. Secure that so that gives us a nice neat edge. And now I'm going to roll it this is this can be quite tricky. I'm going to roll it so that it forms the drum. But again, I need to keep those rings exactly on the edge of the lampshade lining. Otherwise, I won't be able to roll the additional fabric. Right, and when I know I'm near the edge, I probably should have put this on before. I was too busy talking. I need to apply some tape along this section as well to seal the lampshade. A lot of people glue the lampshade, that's perfectly, probably the, the way it's usually done. I must admit to like loving the convenience of very strong double-sided tape, but it's got to be very strong. And with that, I now have a lampshade ready to be glued. Now, just trim and I just need to get some glue ready. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm applying glue 
for the fabric that remain, that's to be rolled over. You can't scrimp on this glue. Um, this is the, the type, I, I use a very good glue, um, which costs more than others, but I want my lampshade to hold. And um, this is, apart from the printing, this is one of the most important parts because you've got to roll these edges in perfectly. Otherwise, it will look like a homemade lampshade, which of course it is, except that it's a beautiful homemade lampshade. So I'm going to push these over the, the um, and then I use my very special tool, which is a takeaway food knife, which I found works perfectly for pushing this fabric underneath the wire rim. And you have to do this in a very slow and methodical manner. Again, I'm sure there are other ways of doing this. You, you do the way which suits you best in rolling this in. I like my takeaway food knife. section done. If you have any little threads hanging out you can do them, trim them up afterwards. so that your fabric goes around your struts. With the smaller lampshades it can be quite, quite difficult to get your arms, your hands in there, but you've just got to do it without leaning on the wall of the lampshade and bowing it. Some people put pegs on this while they're doing it to hold it all on. I've got so much glue in there. I don't need them. Now you do get some little irregularities around the edge in terms of size, but it's you don't want it to be absolutely perfect because I don't want it to look like something that's been bought in the shop. It's a one-off. That's the whole point of buying things that are hand printed and handmade. Right. You just have to be a bit careful around the join you've got double the fabric to turn over. Normally I would put the glue on with a brush, a paint, one of my painting brushes, but I left them in the studio, so I'm using paper. and use my fingernails to push it in that little bit.
and that's the bottom of the lampshade finished. Trim those little errant threads off later. But there we are, finished. And just leave that to dry now. And then we do the top. Okay, so here we are, finished lampshade. So it rolled both edges. And I think it looks great. And it has no form in terms of the pattern and upside down, right way up, whatever. It's not the only style of printing that I do. I'm also very um, fond of, of, of the more structured prints, I'm particularly fond of anything that's got a mid-century bent. Um, that's my design I refer to as fluid. And I do that in a multitude of colours. And then I do cushions to match as well, which again, that's an ombre print, the tile mosaic. And then that's that print in just a monotone colour with no fill. And then the complete opposite or the complete um, negative, I guess, of that print is that one, which I tend to do in very bright colours. With lamp, all of these, I do lampshades, uh, lampshades, cushions, tea towels, table runners, napkins, placemats, all sorts, even little money and wallet, um, passport wallets. Anything I can put on fabric, any pr anything I can print on, I will. And really, this represents probably a 20th of my print designs. I, I, I don't know when to stop. I, I just, to, to be honest, I love printing. Um, I love printing, I love colour, I love design. So I'm, I'm very fortunate that I'm actually able to do this as a living. Um, and consequently I do it seven days a week. And that's what Bob Window is all about, really. It's just me printing. <laughs>